This is part 118 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss last value function in SQL Server. This function is introduced in SQL Server 2012. It retrieves the last value from the specified column. With this function, order by clause is required, partition by clause is optional, rows or range clause is also optional, but for this last value function to work correctly, we may have to explicitly specify a value for this clause. Here is the syntax for this function. First, we specify the name of the function, and this function has got one parameter, the name of the column from which we want to retrieve the last value. And then we use the over clause, and within parenthesis, we specify order by, and then the column list by which we want to sort the data. Let's look at an example. We'll use this employees table in this demo. So within our result set, we want name, gender, salary, and let's use the last value function. So last underscore value, this function has got one parameter, the name of the column from which we want to retrieve the last value. So let's retrieve the name of the employee. And then we will use the over clause within parenthesis, order by, and then the column by which we want to sort the data. Let's sort the data by salary column in ascending order. And let's give this column an alias. Let's call this last value. Now, what do we expect out of this query? Notice we are sorting the data by salary column in ascending order, and then we are asking for the name, last name. So this query is going to give us the name of the highest paid employee. And if you look at the data that we have here, the highest paid employee is Ron. So we expect Ron's name to be displayed against every employee row within the result set. Let's execute this query and see if that's what we get. Look at that, we get totally different result. Why is that? That's basically because, notice within this query, we have not supplied an explicit value for rows or range clause. Since we haven't sp specified an explicit value, it's using its default. What is its default value? Range between unbounded preceding and current row. So this is what is causing you know, this result. Now let's understand how actually this query retrieves you know, the names that we see here within the last value column. So when it's on the first row. So when this last value function is being evaluated for the first row, you know, this value for rows or range clause is in effect. So what does this mean? Range between unbounded preceding. So what does unbounded preceding means? It means the window for last value function starts at the first row. So this is the first row. So it starts there and it ends at the current row. So it's the first row and it's the current row. So only that row is passed to the last value function. And then we are asking for the name uh, column value. So it retrieves mark and display it against in our last value column. When it comes to the second row, so when this function is being evaluated for the second row, so unbounded preceding means the window starts at the first row. So it's going to pass mark row as well as John's row because that's the current row. Out of these two, what is the last value? John. And that's what is displayed right here. So it goes on like that. When it comes to Ron's record, all the rows are passed. And out of this all rows, Ron is the last value. And that's how it is displaying Ron against this row in the last value column. So how to correct this? To correct this, we will have to specify you know, what is the vendor going to be for our last value function. So I'm going to change the value for rows or range clause to rows between unbounded preceding and unbounded following. So what does this mean? Unbounded preceding means the window for the last value function starts at the first row within the result set. And unbounded following means the window ends at the last row within that result set. So when it is on the first row, it is still going to pass all these rows. And that way, we should get the data that we expect. So here, I'm going to specify an explicit value for rows or range clause. So rows between unbounded preceding and unbounded following. So let's execute this query and see what we get. So now notice we get the result that we expect. So Ron is the highest paid employee and that's what we see against every employee row. Now within this example, we don't have any partitions, right? So we have the entire table here. 
Now, if we have partitions, then the highest paid employee from the respective partition should be returned. So let's partition this data by gender column. When we do this, we should get two partitions, male and female. And from the female employee's partition, we should get the highest paid employee. So within the female employee's partition, notice that Jody has the highest salary, 8,000. And that's what we see here. And within male employee partition, Ron is the person with the highest salary. And that's what we see as the value for male employee partition. So we have that same example right here. Thank you for listening and have a great day.